Good day everyone and welcome back to the Stratford Inn on this beautiful Sunday that we are having with this wonderful, wonderful weather. However, it is not a very proud day, but it is a day of commemoration. And it is also the anniversary of the Munich air disaster that we had with um, Sir Matt Busby and the Busby Babes. And, you know, we tend to always and will always remember them Flowers for Munich, as we always say, we saw it in the game that we had most recently against Middlesbrough, you know, Radnik and Chris Wilder walking out with the flowers, you know, in commemoration for today, which, as I've said before, is, you know, the anniversary of the Munich air disaster. And of course, we remember and will continue to remember the Busby Babes as they are continually with us and the spirit that they have left on the Old Trafford pitch will always be there with the players with the fans and with the coaching staff and whoever works at the club as a whole. Nevertheless, for today's video, I wanted to speak about Eric Ten Hag, in my opinion, and why I think he is the perfect coach to take us into a new era, into a era of, you know, challenging for trophies, success, a stable, you know, club, you know, with players developing youth and also, you know, providing that attraction for big name players and players with quality to come to the club and want to play for the club and want to play under Eric Ten Hag. I have this dream in my head as most of you United supporters out there probably would wish Ragnik to have his consultancy role and then underneath him would be Eric Ten Hag and his coaching staff. But with the way our club works, I don't think that's going to be the case, but we can only but dream. As you know, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, you know, so that is my dream, basically. That is the perfect scenario for United to move forward into a new era, as I have said. And, you know, with Eric Ten Hag coming to the club, if he should come to the club, if the board decides that he is the perfect coach, you know, for, for United for the new season, then definitely, you know, some of the players that played under him would love to come and play under him again and will definitely listen to his instruction. He had players such as Matthias De Ligt, such as um, Hakim Ziyech, Donny van der Beek, who we know is on loan at Everton, but he's still a player for us who would love to play under Eric Ten Hag yet again. Because as I've said before in a previous video, Eric Ten Hag's system is absolutely perfect for the way Donny would like to be in a team and basically would be perfect for the Premier League because he basically plays with a 4-3-3 defending system, which I will get into, into much more detail. But I want to speak about himself as a person. So... From what I have seen in various instances, he looks very focused. He looks like a coach who knows exactly what he needs to do. And he's very good at in-game tactics. He's always seen with his little notebook, speaking to his coaches on the bench, you know, trying to figure out exactly what can be done to give his team an extra advantage, you know, inside the game, other than just the tactics that he has before the game given to the players. And of course, you know, you've seen it in certain instances, I'm sure for those that have watched Ajax games, you know, in the Champions League, the way that they play, he likes to pass out from the back. And basically that is the Ajax way. Ask Donny van der Beek, ask Matthijs de Ligt, Frankie de Jong, ask them all, ask any Dutch player who has played for Ajax um, Amsterdam. Basically they have the strict passing system, high pressing, you know, closing down the spaces, you know, when we're not in position of the ball, you know, pressing at a certain angle to allow to make mistakes, you know, by certain opposition and also, you know, pressing in certain triangles, you know, so if one person goes to press, the other would press on his, on his right or his left hand side to allow, you know, for the ball not to be passed, past the person that is basically closing down the person with the ball. Yes, that was a lot of confusing words, but I'm sure you understood what I was trying to say. So, before we get into a much more deeper detail with regards to Eric Ten Hag's tactics and how I think it would be beneficial for our club and for certain players that is at the club already right now, I want to speak about these achievements. And it is, it is seen right across the world that he is a coach that loves to win. He is a coach that loves to win titles. That being said, he is um, currently with Ajax Amsterdam and to date he has won two Eredivisie titles two Dutch Cup titles, which is basically the FA Cup equivalent, and one Dutch Super Cup, which is probably, you know, perhaps the community shield of sorts, you know, for the teams that do play, you know, in the Netherlands. And 
that is a decent record considering what we've had before in terms of coaching going way back to David Moyes who as we very much know wasn't successful you know Louis van Gaal who had a system in place you know as we know he wanted us to play possession football you know holding onto the ball allowing the other team to be completely tired and passed out <laughs> in a sense um, see what I did there and basically how um, van Gaal wanted us to play is basically how City plays it is basically that Barcelona tikka taka style of football, you know, opening up a team via passing and, you know, cutting through them with small, intricate, you know, you know need, eye of the needle passes. And unfortunately, Van Gaal didn't get the time that he needed to do that. He wasn't also the great, the, the best coach, you know, off the field with his press conference on antics and, you know, his commentary. But he's a very honest coach and, you know, he always speaks his mind and, that is exactly what happened to Mourinho. He started speaking his mind and the players started turning on him. And, you know, even though he was very good defensively, you know, winning us two trophies, you know, was all good and well for us and, you know, allowed this winning mentality. But with Mourinho, if you don't follow his way, he doesn't really care about you anymore. And that was evident to see with players like Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford, who had a tough time under him, Anthony Martial, to name but a few. And, you know, then we obviously got to Ole, who had won nothing as a coach other than, you know, the titles in Moldova, you know, in Norway. But comparing that to the Premier League and the Champions League, you know, and the FA Cup and Carabao Cup, it is completely different levels entirely. And, you know, it was seen and evident, as I've spoken about previously with regards to some soldiers' inability to be tactically aware inside the game. This is where Eric Ten Hag excels. You know, finding that solution during the game to ensure, as I've said before, that his team has that extra tactical advantage. Now, of course, you know, with a 4-3-3 defending system, it was kind of the way Ragnik has been playing for the past two games with um, United. And, you know, it has worked. Unfortunately, against Middlesbrough, it wasn't, you know, the best performance. But we had the 4-3-3 defending system. You know, we had McTominay playing in midfield alongside, you know, Pogba and Bruno as the eights. And that's exactly how Eric Ten Hag plays. Now, of course, in my opinion, I feel that Eric Ten Hag would probably come in and he would cause a stir because, of course, there'd be a lot of tactical awareness to be learned, you know, off the pitch during training, you know, for the players. But players like Bruno, Pogba, Donny, as I've said before, um, Ronaldo, should be qualified for the Champions League, would still be here. Um, he would also, you know, love the short, intricate passing because it would mean he wouldn't have to make those runs into the... In, into into um, sorry, beyond the defence, you know, and he would be able to play quicker, you know, on the park and just have short bursts into space so that he can, you know, have a shot on goal. Um, players such as Tellez would excel because of his, his first touch that he has. The low would excel in this. Um, players like Rafael Varane and Lindelof would excel because they are poor playing defenders. Maguire would excel as well because he basically, should we sign a midfielder in the summer, which I hope that we do, he will probably be covered more intensely by that. But I don't think Eric Ten Hag would use Maguire, you know, as a starting centre-back because he wants his centre-backs to be quick on the ball and without the ball exactly so that they can close down quickly and they can also chase back when we are being counter-attacked. However, when he does press, if we are being counter-attacked, there is, is a specific way that he would press. So, for example, let's particularly say we're playing against a Liverpool and Liverpool decides to counter attack us and Jota is running down the wing with you know Firmino being in the center and Mane being on the opposite side maybe you know etc etc and like I said Jota's got the ball and he's running down let's say the left hand side and basically what the press would look like for the counter press on the counter attack that we will be facing basically let's say Alex Telles is there Alex Telles would go and close Diego Jota but he would force him to go inside. Thus, forcing him inside, we would have our defensive midfielder in place who would basically close that particular angle down, thus forcing Jota to look up and play long. But by the time he looks up and plays long, we already have two other further um, of our own players that are in position, which would mean the counter-attack would be null and void. So, that would basically work. However, we have to be tactically aware. This has to be taught to the players and this has to be ensured for the players to know exactly where they need to be in what situation of the game. Also, in transition from defence 
to attack. It is also very, very eloquent how Eric Ten Hag wants his team to play from the back on a counter attack. Just like Ralph Ragnick, it is quick, intense passing, going forward, not passing back, looking for forward movement, forward runs, and just ensuring that there's no time wasted when counter attacking. Because the longer you take to counter attack, the more time the opposition has time to get into their perfect defensive positions once again, and again, thus leaving your counter attack null and void. So, in my opinion, I do feel that Eric Ten Hag would be perfect for um, United in the future. I do not want Mauricio Pochettino because the guy is with PSG and he's not doing anything special. So, I don't want him at the club. I don't want him to come and coach any of our players because I don't think the players will respect him. Because if they're not respecting someone as someone like Ragnik, they didn't respect Mourinho, who was a serial winner. They didn't respect Louis van Gaal. And of course, these are different players, but they are players that have been here since that time. And that basically shows, you know, how much and how strong player power is within our club right now. And it is sad. It is really, really sad and frustrating at the same time. But we definitely hope that the future will look bright for United in the summer. I think this particular season, we basically will have to look and perhaps try and get as far as we can in the Champions League. It's not impossible. It's just a mentality, you know, and a pickup of players' performances, personal performances, you know, on the pitch and also off the pitch when training, you know, ensuring that they do the best that they can to improve, you know, so that we can, you know, be ready for Atletico Madrid when they do come to Old Trafford and when we do go play, you know, in Spain at their stadium. So that is just my opinion on Eric Ten Hag. And of course, as time goes on, we will see more and more who would actually get the job and who um, the club is trying to eye as, you know, being the next coach that they would want to lead the team going forward. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. And I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday further. We'll definitely speak soon again. Please do not forget to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel so that we can ensure that the Stratford End grows and grows and becomes, you know, as big as it can be, reaching every United supporter that we possibly can. Because as we know, we are one, we are united. So that is it from me, Session Johnson and the Stratford End. Goodbye.